afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Today on the SEC ESPN Network, it's women's college basketball as the Georgia Lady Bulldogs meet the LSU Tigers. Come on inside the Maravich Center with Garrett Walford. I'm Lynn Rollins, and the best of this Mardi Gras season to you, Fat Tuesday, not far away. Garrett, these teams share some characteristics coming into this game. Both are shorthanded, and both are coming off road losses. They're both finding ways to win, though, despite those losses. LSU has won four of their last six. Georgia, two of their last three. The Bulldogs, though, lose one of their big defenders in Q Morrison. They're going to face an LSU offense today that's giving up fewer than 60 points per game. It'll be a challenge. The last time out for LSU, Jalen Cherry produced 13 points and five rebounds from backcourt against South Carolina. Cherry was the leading score against the number one ranked game. He's got five double-figure scores season already, and all have come in SEC play. LSU's interior defense is going to have to be mindful of Jenna Stady. She's big in the middle, she plays smart, and she can back up and shoot it. Six foot four, and she's really upped her game this month, scoring figures in four straight SEC contests. She's averaging almost 20-10 over that stretch. She'll have a great matchup in the post tonight with Faustina Fua. Let's look at up to the moment Southeastern Conference standing. South Carolina, Mississippi State, Tennessee, and LSU one through four. Remember, the top four get a double bye in the upcoming SEC Championship Tournament. So we are just about set for basketball. Joni Taylor is approaching 100 victories in her fifth season at and we go to the other bench, and you will see Nikki Fargus, who's won 166 games in her ninth season at LSU and poised perhaps for that double bye in the SEC Championship Tournament and certainly entry into the NCAA field of 64. The Lady Bulldogs against the LSU Tigers. A big game, especially for LSU, as it looks to hold on to that fourth spot or maybe even move up a notch and uh, be in an advantageous position when postseason starts in the SEC tournament. Lady Tigers have won five games against top 25 opponents this season, including two this month. And look who's out on the floor, Lynn, the redshirt senior, Ayanna Mitchell. It is a ceremonial start for Mitchell, who is wearing the brace. She has uh, certainly damaged her ACL. They're going to tip it to Mitchell and she's going to receive the adulation of this crowd. Not able to play, of course. She's been out of the lineup for a few weeks. 1,275 points, 911 rebounds, 36 double-doubles. One of the outstanding players in the history of this LSU basketball program and a ceremonial start for Ayanna Mitchell. Ayanna that was certainly uh, with the blessing of Georgia who recognizes what Mitchell has meant to the game of women's basketball in the SEC, not only at LSU, but across the league. Well, you see the way that her teammates have embraced her. She's played with so much heart over her five years in Baton Rouge. Tough for her to go out with a knee injury and not finish off her season the way she would like, but got to be very proud of her career. It's been a really tough career from an injury standpoint. She's had an earlier knee injury in high school. She had a back injury as a young player here, and now the ACL, which has ended her senior season prematurely. The first possession for Georgia results in a turnover, and here come the Tigers. Brooks fades and fires, left it a little bit short, rebound on the floor. Georgia coming off a loss to Texas A&M, a narrow loss to the Aggies. LSU has suffered two road losses in a row. Maya Caldwell with the first bucket of the game, the junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, averaging nearly 10 points a game. Georgia does not have a, a huge scorer as Afua turns Afua. around and drops one home. And that could be a big problem today against LSU. If Afua can get going early, that'll be trouble in the paint. I'm looking forward to the Jenna Stady, Faustine Afua matchup. Both of those players with great size, elite size, and a big three from the of the key, the tallest player on the floor. Well, we told you that she can pick up and shoot, and she does so immediately. She's been in double figure scoring the last four games in a row, really upped her game. Big numbers rebounding, too. By the way, that's only the third three pointer of the season 
for Stady. Now, she can hit that 12 to 15-foot jump shot with some regularity. Here's number one in the game, Chloe Chapman. Keep an eye on her. She's in for Q Morrison, subbing in. She got 30 minutes off the bench in the last game where Morrison was injured. Georgia has won 26 times and lost 21 against LSU. In this building, LSU has 11 wins against seven losses and another deep bucket by Stady. She has backed out and banged home a three-pointer and a deep deuce. Let's take a time here, 7.48 to go opening quarter. Georgia off to an 8-2 lead against LSU. A smonger, a worm. A host. The Eiffel Tower. Slam blades. The bicycle. Slow, you can count on Geico saving folks money. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. When I showed my mom the DNA results, it made her feel proud. They saw us, they recognized us. Ancestry specifically shows the regions that my family was from. The state of Jalisco, the city of Guadalajara. The results were a reflection of our family and the results were really human. I feel proud about my identity. Greater details, richer stories. Get your DNA kit today at Ancestry.com. Just a couple of minutes into the first quarter from Baton Rouge, Georgia off to a hot leading the LSU Tigers by an 8-2. to two. Let's look at the numbers on the season for these two teams. Most of these uh, categories favor the Tigers. Well, LSU leads in scoring, opponents' points per game, and rebound margin. Both of these teams are very good at rebounding. Free throw percentage certainly favors the Bulldogs. Coach Joni Taylor last year made a real effort to improve free throw shooting. The Dogs have gone from 12th in the SEC to third overall in free throw shooting. That could be the difference at the end of a game. Neither one of these teams rely on the three ball much. Georgia averages about four made three-pointers a game. They've already got one from their tallest player as Stady hit one from the top of the key. And I don't think they're going to bring Faustina Fu out to the top of the key because that's going to open up so much real estate down below the basket. But if she keeps shooting from distance, they've got to get somebody. And I don't know that she will offer too many more shots from outside the arm. She is good from that in that uh, 14, 15, 16, 17-foot range. She has shown the ability over the course of the season, and especially this month, to back out and hit an open jump shot. And she's tough, too. She's one of two Georgia players to start every game this year. She's second overall in points and minutes played. Let's go back and look at Jenna Stady. She's hit a couple of deep buckets, one from three-point range. Well, she leads the team in rebounding. She's second in points, and oh, that's in her arsenal as well. Really nice form for the right-hander. She had a Fua in her face and still sank it from about 18. 7.48 remains in the opening quarter. Georgia has five points from Stady. Actually, a couple of threes from Stady. They have changed. They originally had uh, Stady. Well, they've got five. Yeah, Caldwell's got the three. So Maya Caldwell with the three-pointer and a triple for Stady and a double. Afua turns around, misses from about nine from outside Stady. The rebound, the down court pass underneath, but able to be completing that uh, that play is Caldwell. Caldwell was wide open and missed it, but Georgia claims the offensive rebound. Caldwell, part of that Herald in 2017 recruiting class. She'll take it from behind the high screen, misses it long. Rebound pulled off by LSU's Jalen Cherry, coming off a very nice game against number one ranked South Carolina. Led the team with 13 points. She's got the potential to have big games. LSU gives it up. Connolly on the move. Caldwell now eyes it from three-point range, but won't take it. And a traveling violation down low. Stephanie Paul with an extra step on the baseline. LSU held to just one bucket in three minutes and 20 seconds of the opening period. Pointer with the give and go. Indeed, nicely done. A fool was standing there open. Pointer shot, handed it off to the public. Pointer has really become a more reliable player for LSU. She's approaching nine. 
1,000 points in her career and as a junior has really upped her game. Afua has the two buckets for LSU. She rejects it. Strady picks it up and rolls it back in. Stady was there to get her own miss after Afua got a hand on that first shot. What a touch. Three of four shooting from the field early on, including a triple. She's already got seven. She averages 10.3. A nice first quarter for Jenna Stady, the junior out of Cumming, Georgia, by way of Maryland. Afua down low working on Stady, and she took an extra step. She tried to do a head and shoulders fake to get Stady in the air, uh, and then picked up the pivot foot in the process. If they're going to let him play 1v1, this is going to be a nice matchup. They're going to be able to go against each other hard, heading for the basket. We'll see who can win it. Both of these post players are about the same size. And that's going to be a nice battle to watch. Stady was the former Gatorade Player of the Year in Georgia in 2016. Went to Maryland first and won a Big Ten championship and went to the Sweet 16. She's found a home in Athens. Connolly fakes, gives it to Stady, back to Connolly outside the arc. Connolly the leading scorer, 12 points, about three and a half boards a game. Connolly's had to change her game a little bit. She became the point guard this year, normally got more shots up. Just beating the shot clock is Stephanie Paul as she wheeled around Faustina Fua. First bucket for the senior from Naples, Florida. This is the largest lead, LSU trailing by eight in the first quarter. And the Tigers will bring in a couple of fresh players at the next whistle. Awa Trossi has checked in for LSU. This for three, it rattles out. Pointer had it halfway down, and it reverberated away. Georgia needs to keep the foot on the gas. Caldwell behind the back, uses the left hand and scores. Maya Caldwell with a slick move down on the left side. Coaches love her athleticism. LSU has fallen behind by 10 in Baton Rouge in the opening period. Afua forces it up and hangs on the lip of the rim and falls away in a whistle. I think maybe a hand check foul on Georgia. That's going to be against Stephanie Paul, I believe. It's her first. Mercedes Brooks checks into the game and so does Young. Jalisha Thomas has entered the game as well for LSU. And she's down low now, guarded by Stady. A looper on the run is good off the window by Kayla Pointer. Pointer is capable of creating those types of shots, and LSU needed that bucket badly. Looks very smooth with the ball in her hands. A leader on the floor for them. This for three, left side. It will not fall for Connolly. Connolly has 40 of them on the year, and that's by far and away the most for this Georgia team. Stady came out to guard pointer. Should be a mismatch down low, and the Tigers find it, and a foul is called. When Stady vacated, when she went to the top of the key to defend, that left LSU free to work the post. Trossi did a nice job of seeing that switch. Tried to feed it down there, but it was knocked away. Awa Trazi has really played well at times this month. She has added a dimension to the LSU offense. Pointer kicks it out to the wing, a deep deuce, good! Knocked home by Mercedes Brooks, the senior from Wichita Falls, Texas, by way of Kansas State and Trinity Valley Community College. LSU has cut the lead to six. Three minutes left in the first period. Georgia off to a hot start, and there's a three ball. Banged home by Connolly, her 41st of the season. Connelly. You've got to be mindful of where she is. You cannot leave her open from 20 feet. That was pretty quick into the shot clock as well. Losing her in transition is not going to work for LSU. Pointer from deep, no. Stady got her hands on the rebound, falls down but saves it. Caldwell brings it up, fires it cross court. 
Kick out to Stady, takes another three. That one missed very badly as Brooks rushed out there to defend and might have gotten a little piece of that. But they are gonna give it to LSU. Well, kudos to Georgia. They came out of the locker room on all cylinders, just really playing well to start this game off on the road. LSU undefeated this season against SEC teams in the PMAX, 6-0. Georgia went on the road and lost by one at Texas A&M, 64-63. That entry pass was not a clean one to Delacia Thomas. This for three, another quick release. Connolly misses it. Trazi battles for the rebound and controls it. That's a Young big part of their game move. plan, though. Brooks. Now Young with 18 on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Trazi can hit one out there. She puts it on the floor, gets it by Stady. Reverse layup, good. <laughs> That's one of the most athletic moves we have seen from Awatrazi this year. And a three from the left side rolls and goes. Gabby Connolly was left alone again. She's led the team in three-point shooting the last two years in a row. Now has 43. Let's see if LSU can counter a deep deuce by Young off the mark. Rebound pulled off by Jordan Isaacs. Not a bad foul by Young. Georgia had the numbers and they were heading towards the bucket. Now they'll make a murder. 102 to play, opening period. Georgia has doubled up LSU. It's 20 to 10. Let's go back and look at this move by Trazi. Watch her fake here a couple of times, put it on the floor, get down low, and then reverse the layup. Spectacular play by her. She had a big game against Tennessee, got the win here against top 25 Lady Balls. Mercedes Brooks had some nice stats in that game as well. They were part of the recipe for success. Here's Less Janet Nicholson. Nicholson. Jump shot from the key. Rolls out, no good by Chloe Chapman, a freshman from Mitchellville, Georgia, Maryland. A lot of contact by both offensive and defensive player, and no whistle. It went out of bounds and will stay with LSU. 31 seconds and some change left in the quarter, and plenty of time on the shot clock. Pointer was going up in the lane against the freshman, Chloe Chapman. That contact was pretty solid, and she didn't blink. Pointer will put it in play. The junior out of Marietta, Georgia. It will stay with LSU. This has been a big first quarter for the Bulldogs. 20 points on the road. Pointer dribbling the basketball, an SEC academic on a roll student in accounting. Five to shoot. Two to shoot. No good from the corner. Missed by Cherry. Nine seconds to play in the period, and Georgia will go the length of the court. Connolly to the rack. It rolls across the rim. Rebound pulled off by LSU. And we are done in the first quarter. Ten points is the lowest point total in the first quarter for LSU this year. For over 75 years, with... Oh, with Geico. Oh, sorry. From the top. For over 75 years... <laughs> Keep it together. <laughs> what are you doing there? Stop making Geico, up. saving people money for over 75 years. I'll be right back. With moderate to severe Crohn's disease, I was there. Just not always where I needed to be. Is she all right? 
I hope so. So I talked to my doctor about Humira. I learned Humira is for people who still have symptoms of Crohn's disease after trying other medications. And the majority of people on Humira saw significant symptom relief, and many achieved remission in as little as four weeks. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores, don't start Humira if you have an infection. Be there for you and them. Ask your gastroenterologist about Humira. With Humira, remission is possible. Georgia with a very productive first quarter, leading LSU 10. Let's go around the SEC and get up with the latest news and notes. Five SEC teams are in this week's AP Top 5. The SEC Players of the Week, Ryan Howard and Kennedy Carter. SEC Freshman of the Week, Lavender Briggs from Florida. And don't forget, March 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th in Greenville, South Carolina, the Southeastern Conference Championship Tournament. How good has number one ranked South Carolina been this year? They've won 20 in a row, including 13 straight in Southeastern Conference play. Their only loss came out against the Indiana Hoosiers. That was a top 25 team, but they have just been dominant. Number one team looking good for the Southeastern Conference heading into the postseason. And a few days ago, South Carolina just annihilated Connecticut. Georgia by 10. Georgia scored 20 points in the first quarter against Tennessee earlier this year. This is good production. And that was a game they ended up losing by 15 points, but a great start for the Bulldogs. Caldwell with the entry pass down low. Afua is defending. LSU has missed the last six shots. The Tigers need to get into an offensive rhythm. That was the freshman, Javin Nicholson. They'd love to get her game started, see if she can get working down low. Newman from Lawrenceville, Georgia, is Nicholson in the game now, averaging a little more than four a game, and the number of rebounds. Cherry, Young, Richard Harris, Afua, and Spencer in the game now for LSU. Nikki Farg is trying to find a combination that can string some buckets together. And with Stacy out of the game, you think they'd go to Afua. That's That'll nestled work. in. Jump shot from the left side by Jalen Cherry as it crawled over the rim. The Tigers needed that. They're down by eight early in the second quarter. Chapman, Connolly, Caldwell, Isaacs, and Nicholson on the floor now for the Lady Bulldogs. Connolly puts it on the floor, makes that entry pass down to the freshman. She nearly fumbled away, but kicks it out for an open jump shot, and it is good. Very well done by Chloe Chapman. Chapman is a freshman from Mitchellville, Maryland. She played a career-high 30 minutes the last time out against Texas A&M. Tigers get a bucket on the jump shot from the left side by Jalen Richard Harris. The Houston native with her first bucket on senior night. Her family was in town. She was honored prior to the ball game with three other seniors for LSU. Eight minutes and some change. Remain in the opening half. We are in the second quarter. Jenna Stady, who scored well in the first quarter, is on the bench now getting a rest. Apua blocks that attempt on the flat-footed rejection. Richard Harris takes it to the middle, draws traffic. She's in the storm seat. She gets it out of there. Young kicks it left side. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Apua sets the pick. Cherry to Richard Harris. Six to shoot now. Richard Harris fakes left, dribbles right. Spencer beats the shot clock. Offensive rebound to LSU, and a pushing foul is called. As Jalen Cherry grabbed that rebound and then was pushed down. Jenna Stady comes back into the game for Georgia. I was wondering if she might have got a hand to the face as she came down. Let's see. It runs right into the midsection there of Nicholson. Now 
Now Stady back in the game for Georgia. And she is lined up defensively right now against Afua at the elbow. 7.24 to play in the second quarter. Georgia has led throughout and right now holds a 22-14 lead. Afua has 14 games this year where she scored in double figures. She already has four tonight. Very nice pass to Spencer and a whistle and a foul called after that nice dish from Jalen Richard Harris. Athletic move, hangs in the air, gets the shot away. Spencer right there, put a shoulder into the defender. The whistle went her way. Raquel, a junior from New Orleans. She started her career at Texas A&M. She's battled some knee problems and drives home the first free throw. Came into the game shooting 80% from the line, limited attempts. LSU cannot afford to leave any points at the free throw line. That one comes up short. The lead is seven and the Tigers will pick up in backcourt. Georgia beats the trap. Three ball from downtown. Good by Connolly. That's her third. That gives her 43 on the year. By far and away, the most productive three-point shooter for the Lady Bulldogs. And the lead has moved back to double figures. You've got to take her seriously. A criminal justice major at Georgia. She wants to work for the FBI or the DEA one day. Spencer fading and firing and missing. Trying to do too much by herself that time. As she was working hard to create the shot. Create the shot, but just could not get it up after all the maneuvering inside in traffic. 13 on the shot clock. Afua drives home. The line drive jumper from the elbow. They've been playing her outside of the paint. That's trying to draw Stady out and create some running room for other players like Pointer and Spencer. But if she's going to knock them down like that, that works too. Six points on a couple of rebounds for Faustina Afua. Here's another freshman who's checked in for Georgia, Jordan Isaacs, number 20. Isaacs out of Alpharetta, Georgia. LSU on the run after the deep rebound. Richard Harris. Here's Pointer. Snakes inside. Hangs. Fires. No good. Spencer knocked that rebound loose. And it's going to stay. No, it's going to go to Georgia. I thought for a moment she might have knocked it loose off of the Georgia player. But LSU will... Peel back defensively, trailing by eight. Just under six minutes to go in the second quarter from Baton Rouge. Lady Tigers have done a nice job of weathering this hot shooting storm by Georgia. They're shooting better than 55% from the floor, but LSU's keeping it close. Stady, a quick release, comes up short. Bounces all the way to the sideline. Shoes. Jalen Richard Harris, when she slipped down, kind of banged that elbow on the hardwood. The Tigers trail by eight with five and a half to play in the opening half. Now they'll double team Afua. Her jump shot is a little bit short as she tried to get it up over Stady. Georgia in the dark uniforms with the possession. And that looked like a traveling violation. It is. Stephanie Paul trying to back in, skidded her feet. And we've got a timeout with 4.58 to go in the second quarter. Georgia 25, LSU 17 in Baton Rouge. Were you planning on mowing the lawn today? Seen it, covered it. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Go get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. There are times when our need to connect really matters. To keep customers and employees in the know to keep business moving. 
Comcast Business is prepared for times like these. Powered by the nation's largest gig speed network to help give you the speed, reliability, and security you need. Tools to manage your business from any device, anywhere, and a team of experts here for you 24-7. We've always believed in the power of working together. That's why when every connection counts, you can count on us. Georgia leads LSU midway through the second quarter, 25-17, and those points from deep. Gabby Connolly heating it up. Connolly's so good, the junior guard from San Antonio. Texas has been able to force turnovers and hot from deep as well. Connolly second on the team, a three-pointers. Good recipe for them if she can continue to stay hot from outside the arc. Nine points on three for seven shooting. Four minutes and 58 seconds to go. In the second quarter, Connolly is from San Antonio, and a couple of those threes seem like they've come from the Texas border. Georgia's got a lot of production from their starters. LSU has seven points off its bench. Trozzi with a scoop after another elusive move. A couple of fancy buckets by Trozzi. LSU down by six. That was a very important hoop by Trozzi. Afua got a hand on that. Stady kept it alive. She's got it now. Lots of contact. They're letting those big players go at each other down low. And now a whistle. Afua and Stady look like tectonic plates down there bumping <laughs> against each other. And the ricochet was Stephanie Paul off the torso of Stady. Paul hit the hard there, but she's back. Paul, one of those players, it's easy to root for her. Very fun player to watch. Stady is an excellent free throw shooter an 88%, but she misses this one. Stady also is a 50% field goal shooter, and there's a couple of rare misses. But a whistle and a lane violation on Afua. So Stady, who normally doesn't need an extra chance to score from the free throw line, indeed will get one here. And LSU would like to keep Georgia off the line in this game. Bulldogs third in the conference in free throw shooting as a team. They've had half a dozen games this year in which they have shot 80% or better as a team. Again, as you pointed out, Garrett, much, much better than a year ago when they were not good at all at the free throw line. That's a difficult entry pass. Afua's got it. Fires it across to try to set something up for a teammate. There's Trozzi again. Trozzi ducking and bobbing and weaving and scoring. Trozzi had a career high 22 against Tennessee. Looks like she's back at it here against Georgia. Could be on tap for a big game. Six for Trozzi in limited duty. Quick release by Connolly, and that was a poor shot selection as it misses everything, but it's going to stay with the Lady Bulldogs. And LSU has reduced the lead to five with three and a half to go in the first half. This is a game LSU needs to win to remain in fourth place. How about that move? Jenna Stady somehow was able to work it around and under Faustina Fua. She's shooting 50% in the game, four of eight, now has 10 points. That's her season's average. 28-21, LSU down. Georgia has led since the opening bucket. Pointer shakes and bakes and comes up a little bit short. Rebound bounces deep, controlled by LSU's Jalen Cherry. They'll take Paul off of her. Now Connolly will guard Pointer. 
This is Trazzi, puts it on the floor once, twice, spins, uses the left hand, can't get it to go this time. Rebound pulled off by Coldwell. Oh, and a traveling violation Paul. against Stephanie Paul. Paul is a unique athlete because not only does she play basketball, she is a member of the varsity track and field team at Georgia. She throws the discus. She had a big time high school career, shot put, throws, discus. She's got to be excited to, after the basketball eligibility is finished, join the track team. And there's another basketball player, Chloe Chapman, the freshman, who is an outstanding soccer player. That's nice by Faustina Pua. She used her size, created a little open space, and scores from the left side with the right-handed layup. Eight for Apua. Pass down into the paint intended for Mallory Bates. It goes out of bounds, LSU ball. Five turnovers for Georgia now. This one coming with two minutes remaining in the second quarter. LSU with a chance to cut the lead to two with a long one. And that would be the closest LSU has been since very early. Drazi tries to throw down in and LSU commits the fifth turnover. That pass was fair. Offensive foul. off Cold against Shania Jones. That's her second. Watch number 21 in the dark uniform right there. Extend that left arm. And a clear push off. That's offensive interference in uh, football. Georgia's going to have to clean up the turnovers. LSU already forces eight or more turnovers a game against the defense. They can't give gifts to the Lakers. Young. And a foul called there. That shot was rejected initially by Mallory Bates. But uh, it's Jones who picks up the foul, and that's her third. Bates with a nice play at the lane, shows her length at six foot two, checks in off the bench, redirects that ball. Caitlin Hose, a sophomore from Hazel Green, Alabama, enters the game for the first time. She wears number 10. Young trying to pull LSU closer. The first free throw makes it a four-point lead for Georgia. Young can get the Tigers within three, and she does so. So LSU in the last three or four minutes fighting back and closing the gap. Georgia had a double-digit lead not long ago. Coming up at halftime, we will honor the LSU seniors plus first half highlights, and the bank shot is good for three. Stephanie Paul uses the backboard and that's only the second three she's made this year. We've got a whistle and contact away from the ball. Georgia has been credited with six three-pointers out of 11 attempts. Shooting better than 50% from distance. Stephanie Paul committed the foul. That's her second. Oh, a Trazi. We'll have an opportunity here. After this free throw, some substitutions for Georgia will come in. Tross has got a very nice game, a nice addition to the roster for LSU. Sink that one. 31-27. For LSU is four points behind Georgia. Less than a minute to go. Stady to Conley, 14 to shoot. There's about 23 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Jaylen Cherry. 
Cherry committed the foul. That's her first. That's only the second team foul against LSU. Count the bucket as Kayla Hubbard sliced right through, took that little short pass from the baseline and laid it in, and she'll have an opportunity to complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way. That was well done. Angie just checked in from the bench. Georgia's got great production from their bench so far in this game. See if she can make it a three-point play. Hubbard is a 71.5% pre-show three-shooter. The sophomore Jones for Georgia. Chapman will come back in for Georgia. You mentioned her prowess on the soccer pitch. Leading score, six goals as a freshman for the Bulldogs. She was a difference maker on the soccer field. And also a key player for this basketball team. Thirty twenty-seven, Georgia. Ten to shoot. Afua trying to dribble out of a triple team. And she takes steps, LSU, with a costly turnover. Not able to get up a shot in the closing seconds of the second quarter. So now Georgia has enough time to work. 12 seconds to play in the half. LSU wants to force a deep shot. Connolly does not even get a shot attempted. She was peeking around trying to find how much time was left. Not much communication by Georgia at the end. And we go to halftime. The Bulldogs 34, LSU 27. At Farmer Insurance, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even a three-ring fender bender. Sorry about that. Apologies. Damn it. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, boo. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hey, we're sorry. Quite the circus, but we covered it. At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. So get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. And then what happened, Daddy? Well, you see here? There's a photo of you. There's a photo of your mommy. And then there's a picture of me. But before our story, it goes way, way, way back with our great, great, great grandparents. See this handsome man? Mm -hmm. His name is William. And William fell in love with Rose, and they had a kid. His name is Charles. And Charles met Martha. Isn't she pretty? <laughs> yeah. It's half the Maravich Center, the site of this action between Georgia and LSU. The Lady Bulldogs have never in this first half and carry the lead into the locker room. Prior to the start of this game, the four LSU seniors were honored. LaToya Ashman, Jalen Richard Harris, Rachel and Mercedes Brooks. Let's take a look. LaToya has been a great role player during her two seasons with the purple and gold. The 5'8 guard from Wellington, Florida, brings a toughness and fight to everything she does on and off the court. A key player off the bench, she brings a defensive spark to the floor. In the classroom, she's a member of the SEC Academic Honor Roll, and she is a sports administration major and wants to get into event management. Joining her on the court are Andrea Ashman and her brother, Logan. Ladies and gentlemen, LaToya Ashman. Our next senior is Mercedes Brooks. Mercedes is known for the energy that she brings to the team on and off the court. The 5'11 guard from Wichita Falls, Texas, has been a Tiger for two seasons. Garrett's six starts over her LSU career and contributed 35 assists, 33 steals, and six blocks over the last 54 games. She's a sports admin major and will graduate in August. Joining her on the court are her mother, Diane Clark, her father, Robert Brooks, her brother, Robert Jr., and her sisters, Jasmine and Robin, as well as her niece, Naomi. Our next senior is Jalen Richard Harris. Jalen has shown over four seasons as a Tiger that great things come in small packages. 
The 5-2 guard from Houston has started in 58 of the 111 games she's played in over the course of her LSU career. She has scored 435 points, grabbed 187 rebounds and 98 steals, and dished out 184 assists. Her career free throw percentage is sitting at 78.2 over four years, and she has made 56 three-pointers. Off the court, Jalen has served as the co-chair of the SEC Women's Basketball Leadership Council and has been the team's representative to the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. The two-time member of the SEC Academic Honor Roll is majoring in Canis and is expected to graduate in May. Joining her on the court is her mother, Cassie Richard, her father, Charles Pennington, and her, and her grandparents, Alva and Adley Richard. And our final senior is Ayanna Mitchell. Ayanna will go down as one of the most versatile players in LSU women's basketball history. The All-SEC performer from Conyers, Georgia, is a two-year team captain and was the 33rd player in LSU history to score over 1,000 career points, finishing 22nd on the Tigers' all-time scoring list with 1,275 points. Career field goal percentage is 59.5% and ranks third in the all-time list. The six-foot senior finish, uh, forward finishes her LSU career with over 1,000 points and 900 rebounds. She averaged 11.2 points and eight rebounds over her career. Active in the community, Ayana is currently a top 10 finalist for the Katrina McLean Award and was a top 30 candidate for the Senior Class Award. She's graduating in May with a degree in interdisciplinary studies. Joining her on the court are parents Lucky and Thea Mitchell. Well, there is the talented group of seniors. Always an emotional night. Ayanna Mitchell in particular because of the way her senior se uh, season ended, Garrett Walbert. She, of course, has had uh, injuries prior to her coming to LSU, a knee injury, a back injury earlier in her career, which set her aside a while, a redshirt senior, and uh, her season cut short a couple of weeks ago. She intends to rehabilitate that ACL injury and then uh, try to move on and play professional basketball. But Ayanna Mitchell, one of the most impactful players in the history of LSU basketball, and especially over the last four or five years, really she put a stamp on this team. Well, I agree, the heart and soul of this team, and she was trying to drive LSU back to where the Tiger fans think they belong. The Sweet 16, trying to get them back in the NCAA tournament. They'd beaten four top 25 teams with her in her senior season. Just a, a debilitating blow, but LSU's been able to come back, get some wins since she's left the lineup. And they're gonna have to do a lot tonight to try and slow down this hot shooting Georgia team. They've done a nice job. In all honesty, in the absence of Ayanna Mitchell, some of her teammates have taken up the slack, and LSU certainly in, with a chance to finish in the top four in the league and get that double bye in the SEC championship tournament. We'll be back with more from halftime here in Baton Rouge. It's 34-27. Georgia leads. Were you playing on mowing the lawn today? No. Seen it, covered it. At Farmers Insurance, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. So get a quote at farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. My time is thin, but so is my lawn. It's been worn down to ugly, thin grass. Now there's Scott's Thicker Lawn, the revolutionary three in one solution for weak lawns. With a soil improver to strengthen roots, seed to fill in gaps, and fertilizer to feed. The result? Up to a 50% thicker lawn after just one application. Now yard time is our time. This is a Scots Yard. Fine, Maravich on the campus of LSU, Georgia, has led from wire to wire and has a 34-20 advantage LSU right now. One of the most recognizable faces in all of sports is in the building. There is Shaquille O'Neal, former Tiger, of course, gone on to many world championships in the NBA and uh, easy, easily recognizable. He's here with uh, his daughter, Amira, who's on a recruiting trip, and his son, Sharif, has announced his intention to transfer from UCLA to LSU. But Shaquille O'Neal in the building today. Four NBA titles. 
Olympic championship gold medal. He's actually sitting underneath his own jersey right now inside the PMAC. Great to see the big man back, and I think he's going to be busy for a while signing autographs. A lot of Tiger fans in line. Well, with Sharif coming here, and if Amira indeed comes here, uh, certainly that will make his presence in this building a lot more frequent. He's always spoken highly of LSU. He makes uh, frequent appearances back here in Baton Rouge, but uh, that might be a sight that's even more common in the coming years. Hey, let's be honest. Name me a better ambassador for LSU over the years than Shaquille O'Neal. Well, let's go to first half activities here. It was uh, Trazi uh, with some athletic moves for LSU helping the offense. Lady Tigers got good production from their post play. Awa Trazi and Faustina Fua combined to shoot 7 of 11, put 16 points on the board. Trazi, 8 points of her own, Shooting 75% from the field, Georgia would be able to counter with some nice guard play as well, but you see the nifty moves there. How about Gabby Connolly? Three of five from distance to get things going for her offense, which Lynn mentioned earlier had a double-digit lead in the second quarter. But Connolly's one of those players. She doesn't come out. You've got to be able to get on her. And then Jenna Stady shooting 50% from the floor, 10 points, six boards. She made her first three-pointer since January 5th against Mississippi State. Well, let's look at some first-half numbers here as we get set for the start of the Rebounds are even at 15 each. Georgia has seven assists, six of 11 from point range. That indeed is the difference in this game. The Tigers have not connected from distance. Points in the paint about even. Turnovers are even at six each. It's the outcourt shooting now that statistically is the most evident difference in this game. And if LSU can clean up the turnovers, I think they'll have the ability to keep scoring on the inside and put some pressure on Georgia. If the long distance shots for Georgia don't keep falling, you can see nine and one this year when it leads at half and LSU is four and six when it trails at halftime. So the Tigers have some work to do, certainly capable of doing it in their own building as we get the third quarter started. With Garrett Wolbert, I'm Lynn Rollins. Thank you for joining us today. This is a very important game for LSU as it looks to hold on to fourth place in the Southeastern Conference and earn that all-important double bye in the upcoming Southeastern Conference Championship Tournament. Well, they've got a game coming up on Thursday night. They'll take on a, a very talented team with Vanderbilt coming in, and then they go on the road to Arkansas, who's a top 25 team, another chance to impress the committee. Could be their sixth top 25 win of the year. They'd like to finish strong and get a top four bye. Trozzi, Cherry, Brooks, Richard Harris, and Afua on the floor for LSU. Chapman, Connolly, Paul, Caldwell, and Stady for Georgia. That'll be Mercedes Brooks with the push from behind in the lane. Her That's first her first. Paul tries to beat Stady and throws it away. Turnover for the Bulldogs. Connolly had nine in the first half for the Bulldogs. Three threes. Jenna Stady started hot. She finished with ten points in the first half. Those two led the way. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Go! LSU got eight from Trazi and eight from Afua. Trying to get some more here from Afua. That ball is batted loose. And it's going to be possession the other way. Georgia will get it. Passes into the paint need to little, be a little bit cleaner, a little bit higher for Afua. If they're going to give her one-on-one -on -one matchups down in the paint with Stady, got to hit a clean pass. Here's Stady working against Afua, spinning both ways. Afua holding her ground, and they're going to get Afua for a foul. That's her second, I believe. Not a lot of contact there. Afua was locked down, spinning, not making contact at all, but apparently enough to put Stady at the free throw line. She's got 11 points. 
State has now scored in double figures five games in a row. That's a career best. And as you mentioned, February has been her month. It's a move. 12 puts, for her. Puts her team back up by nine. LSU needs to string a few buckets together and get something inside. There is a Fua Stady with an over-the-back foul. Faustina Fua working very hard to claim that offensive rebound. Well, she's showing her strength. She did the power dribble on the miss, went back up strong with it. Stady was all over her back, draws the foul against her, and she'll head to the line. Fua, 52.5% from the free throw line. Career numbers have gone up and up each season for Afua, who's now a redshirt junior, averaging almost 10 rebounds a night and over 10 points per contest. She bags both free throws, and LSU trails by seven in Baton Rouge, 8.40 to go, third quarter. Stady's foul against Afua was her first of the game. This for three, a quick release, and rolls away off the rim. Offensive rebound pulled off by Caldwell, and the possession will stay with Georgia. Maya Caldwell triggering it the corner. Whip it into uh, Stady, and there wasn't any room there. It's fortunate for Georgia that uh, the Bulldogs retain control. I don't know what Caldwell thought she saw, but there was no clear path to Stady. And we've got players hitting the deck. And a pushing foul against Awa. That's her first. See if Georgia can't get Connolly back on track. Maybe Caldwell. Connolly with the ball now. LSU defending well. That's Richard Harris really digging in defensively. Look at Richard Harris go to work. But a nice move to the bucket, and finally, the shot up and in. Connolly with her first deuce. She's got 11. <laughs> Richard Harris stops, shoots the 13 for good off the window. Nice to see her come off a screen, pull up in the lane. Easy little eight footer. Stady, quick release, uses the rim, the backboard, and the net. 14 for Stady out of coming Georgia, averaging a little over 10 a game. Cherry looking for a pick. Afua comes out to set the screen. And an illegal screen, I believe, a moving screen against Faustine Afua. That's her third. And uh, two of those fouls have come here in the last couple of minutes. Seven fourteen to play in the third quarter. Georgia leads by nine. Georgia has surrendered only one halftime lead this year in the 10 times that they have been leading at halftime. And there's a nice give and go right back into the hands of Isaacs. And Jordan, the freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia, has her first bucket. Georgia had LSU's defense on a string that time. <laughs> the Georgia Tigers Thunder. really need to find the outcourt shot. They have not converted a three-point opportunity today. Well, the guards have been frustrated in today's game. Georgia's done a nice job, minus Q Morrison, who's been able to, you know, they've been able to work out there and keep these players from LSU from getting hot. Kayla Pointer, one for six in this game. She's on the bench right now. An illegal pick. Three substitutions for LSU coming on the floor. Forty-two, thirty-one. Georgia 
leading by double figures. LSU inserts Carly C into the game, a 5'7 junior from Flossmoor, Illinois. This is her first action of the outing. Tigers looking to get some kind of offensive rhythm going. Spencer kicks it to the wing, takes a return pass. Four seconds to shoot. Young from distance, no, did not get a piece of the rim. Offensive rebound, put back good. Just ahead of the shot clock violation, Jalen Cherry and Chapman committed the foul. Goes up strong, little elbow to elbow contact there and the finish for Cherry. So Cherry just ahead of the buzzer to conclude the shot clock. Grabs the offensive rebound and scores, but cannot find the three-point play. 42-33. That's knocked loose by C, and it goes out of, ba out, out of bounds off of Carly. Then at the front court next to us on press row. Georgia has not trailed in this game. Nice ball movement from side to side. A shot E too long as Caldwell overfired it. LSU needs a bucket here. Needs to string a couple together and gets one in traffic. Tiara Young, her first bucket. But nobody's been able to stop that young lady. Georgia needs to do more of that as well. LSU had back-to-back -back buckets in the paint. Uh, in the paint. Stady answers here. Bulldogs were so hot in the first half shooting the three, they had six made triples. They're 0 for 2 from distance since the intermission. Six third quarter points for Stady. Young hits one from about 16. Back to back buckets by Young. A 6 2 run for LSU. The lead is 44 37. LSU's mission now. Make those tennis shoes squeak defensively. Well, and it will stay with Georgia eight to shoot. Coach, Coach Taylor foul, not just the ball out of bounds off of LSU. 4:34 to go in the third quarter. We'll step aside for a moment. Georgia by seven. With moderate to severe disease, I was there. Just not always where I needed to be. Is she all right? I hope so. So I talked to my doctor about Humira. I learned Humira is for people who still have symptoms of Crohn's disease after trying other medications. And the majority of people on Humira saw significant symptom relief, and many achieved remission in as little as four weeks. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Be there for you and them. Ask your gastroenterologist about Humira. With Humira, remission is possible. Just over four and a half minutes remain in the third quarter in Baton Rouge, Georgia. 44, LSU 37. Here's the latest eight top 20. You see South Carolina 24 and one on the year, ranked number one. Mississippi State ranked number nine. There are four SEC teams in the top 20. Kentucky is at number 14. Texas A&M, which LSU has defeated twice this year, is number 16. Arkansas is number 22 this year, or right now. Saw USC and Mississippi State both in the top 10. Mississippi State only has two losses in conference play, and it's not likely South Carolina is going to lose any more games, but they still have a shot at tying for the league title as we head into the final week of the season. 
How tough has Georgia's schedule been this year? They've played eight opponents ranked in the top 25. Eight of those losses have come against the top 25. Their schedule ranked number 20 nationally. A long attempt by Connolly. It came up short off the iron, but Georgia was able to claim it. That's knocked loose by Trozzi from behind Stady and then thrown away by LSU. The Tigers forced a turnover but then committed one themselves. LSU trying to turn up the heat. Spencer defending that entry pass. Nine turnovers for LSU now. And it will go back to LSU. Spencer did a good job of disrupting that play and it results in an LSU possession. One of the smaller lineups on the floor for LSU right now. Trazi working against Stady, fakes a couple of times. Spencer passed up an open shot, and a three-second violation is called. Spencer had an open 12-footer, did not put it in the air. She tried to take it inside, and Trazi was called for camping out in the lane. Would have had Trazi there as well if she misses for a rebound. Three and a half to play third quarter. C comes away with the miss. Carly looking for it. Offensive foul against Young. And LSU just can't get out of its way right now. That's well trying to set up her feet. Tigers have just turned it over repeatedly here the last minute or so. Well, Georgia came up with two empty possessions and LSU didn't make them pay. No way to close the gap. 44-37. Trazi gambled, almost intercepted that pass, but Stady was able to grab it. That comes up short. Tigers battle for it. C claims the loose ball. LSU, last three possessions have resulted in turnovers. Let's see if the Tigers can string a couple of profitable possessions together. Trazi had an open look. That one a little long off the back iron. Connolly on the move. Caldwell back up front to Connolly. Connolly snaking inside. There's contact. And let's see if they put Connolly on the line. She was able to snake around the foul. Screen. That's her second. Connolly was not picked up as she came off the screen. Almost got all the way to the hoop. Faustina Fua will return to the lineup. Jalen Richard Harris returns to the lineup. Cherry leaves, and so does Trozzi for LSU. And Connolly will shoot free throws for the first time. She's an 80.6% free throw shooter. Twelve for the junior from San Antonio. You know, Lynn, for losing one of their better defenders in Q Morrison, Georgia's played really good basketball over the last two weeks. You look at the wins they piled up against Alabama on the road at Florida. Tough loss against Mississippi State, but they've been in all of these ball games. They're certainly playing with confidence here in Baton Rouge. Q Morrison was uh, averaging almost eight points a game and then tore that labrum against Texas A&M and has lost for the season. Their number one defender, too. Woo! That's going to be a deep deuce. Connolly was just inside the line, drives it home. And just as LSU was approaching Georgia, the Lady Bulldogs come back and stretch the lead to 11. Connolly leads all scorers now with 15 points. She's had six in the quarter, had nine on three threes in the first half. Trozzi working hard, misses the line drive jumper, but gets the loose ball rebound. And a reach-in foul, I believe, on Coldwell. And now we have a technical, technical foul. Technical foul. 
I believe one of the assistant coaches on the bench for the Lady Tigers has been teed up. Well, they didn't call the foul on Codwell, apparently, and that's what that's what uh, drew the technical foul. Very rarely does Nikki Fargus say something outside the lines. This has been a great basketball game to this point. Well regulated by the officials. Haven't had any real big concerns. Might get some clarification here. LSU trailing by 11, and the coach is meeting there in front of the scores table. So we have a technical foul on an assistant coach from LSU, and then we've got a technical foul on a FUA. I believe Aaron Kaloff standing next to Ayana on the bench. He just got teed up at the bottom of your screen in his second season with LSU. And then Afua will get one as well. So, so free two throws technical coming. fouls have been called against LSU. And then Georgia will have possession as well. We got word from referee number two, Kevin Peffel, that uh, there was a foul, and a technical foul called against an assistant coach for LSU, and a technical foul called against Afua. In that order. And now Afua has three fouls total. Four, I believe. You're right. Yeah, they've updated it to four. Georgia shooting almost 75% as a team from the strike. Puts another one on their ledger. Connolly looking for her eighth point in the quarter, and she's got it. And now she'll shoot two shots for the second technical foul. Can she go four for four? So now Georgia has a chance if you if you were for a, a, a six or seven point play after the four free throws. And Georgia now with its biggest lead, 52-37. Just as the Tigers were getting within a bucket or two of Georgia, some turnovers, some empty possessions, and a couple of technical fouls, and now Georgia on the move again. An inadvertent trip is called against Carly C. Connolly went down hard there. She they did. They got their feet tangled up just hard. Let's see. Closer look. She might have tripped on her own player. Certainly there was an offensive player that might have gotten tangled up, but they do call the foul on C. And Connolly just hit four free throws. Goes back to the line. It was Connolly who hit the game-winning free throws against Alabama. They knocked out the Tide in overtime, 75-74. Connolly is 7-for-7 seven seven from the stripe, now 8-for-8, eight eight, and they've all come in this quarter. And all of a sudden, Georgia has moved to a sizable lead, 54-37, with 84 seconds to go in the third period. And LSU has a lot of work to do. Tigers Offensively, Faustina Fua watching with four fouls. Young, Tetrazzi, a kick out for three. There's the first one. Jalen Richard Harris, the first three of the game for the Tigers. Every possession so big from here on out. Lady Tigers need a stop. That's the 14th triple of the season for Jalen Richard Harris. Trying to force Georgia outside, clogging the paint. Less than a minute to go, and a jumper by Caldwell is good. That's her first bucket of the quarter, seven in the game. 56-40, Georgia by 16. Trazi, yes, back-to-back -back triples. Trazi joins the party.
We come to the half minute mark in the third period. Here's Connolly who scored a double figures for the 18th time this year. She shoots quickly and misses and LSU has a chance to score with the final possession. Young thought she was gonna be bumped and just slung that one up there in desperation and it comes away seven seconds to play in the third period. Connolly fakes left, dribbles right, kicks it to the wing for an open two. Uh-uh, right at the horn. That one missed by Chapman and we go to the fourth quarter in Baton Rouge. 10 minutes to play. Georgia 56, LSU 43. Insurance in almost everything in your home or car. Yeah! And we covered it all. Bundle home and auto with farmers, and you could save an average of 20%. So get a quote today. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. With moderate to severe Crohn's disease, I was there. Just not always where I needed to be. Is she all right? I hope so. So I talked to my doctor about Humira. I learned Humira is for people who still have symptoms of Crohn's disease after trying other medications. And the majority of people on Humira saw significant symptom relief, and many achieved remission in as little as four weeks. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB. B, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Be there for you and them. Ask your gastroenterologist about Humira. With Humira, remission is possible. Shaquille O'Neal in one of those end zone seats here at the Maravich Center. Georgia leading 56-43. As we play with 10 minutes, here's what's upcoming for Georgia, just three games at Kentucky, at home against, uh, and then actually two games before the SEC tournament in early March. And for LSU upcoming, the Tigers will have a game against Vanderbilt on Thursday and then at Arkansas and then the SEC tournament. LSU, LSU trying to get that top four seed and get a bye in the SEC tournament. And in terms of who they could tie with in the standings, they're in a good spot. Texas A&M is right around them. If they can beat Arkansas on the road, they'll have the tiebreaker over the Hogs as well and an opportunity to finish top four and really have a special end to their season. Right now, the Tigers are trying to avoid a third straight loss. They went on the road and lost at Auburn. That's a game that uh, Nikki Farkas really wanted to, to claim on the road and then lost to South Carolina. It held South Carolina to its lowest point total in the SEC with 63 points, but LSU could only manage 48. Starting off the fourth quarter, 56-43 Georgia. They're nine and one on the year when they lead at the half. Jalen Richard Harris has tossed in a couple of threes. 56 46 LSU down by 10. Tigers have three consecutive threes, and there's an easy look inside to Stady. LSU left her alone down on the low block, and Stady has 18, continuing her very productive scoring in the month of February. Drazi tries it for three. On line, but a little bit off the mark long. Stady backs out, shoots the deuce, got it. She can hit him from out there. Don't think that that's an anomaly. Stady is a good shooter from that 14 to 16 foot range. Georgia up by 14. LSU has to play with a sense of urgency on both ends of the court. They need to find an answer for Stady and Connolly. They both have over 20 points. A scoop at the hoop after the drive by Kayla Pointer, the junior from Marietta, Georgia. LSU down by a dozen, eight and a half to play. A three ball comes up short from Caldwell, but the putback 
is good by Stady. Good job of taking advantage of what LSU is giving him. That was a little bit early in the shot for that long, but they get the miss, put it right with Stady. Everything going their way. Stady has 22. She's 9 for 14 from the floor. She's a 50% shooter on the year. This is Trozzi. Yes, nicely done. Trozzi showing some maneuverability around the rim. High percentage shots for both her and Afua. LSU has become much more efficient offensively, but Georgia has as well here in the fourth quarter. Connolly's done a great job at drawing fouls. She's 8 of 8 from the line. The Tigers will double team and a backcourt violation. LSU jumping all over the ball. That'll bring some life into the PMAC, forcing the turnover. The two diminutive guards really turning up the pressure defensively. Richard Harris with 10 points in the ballgame sets up the trap and forces a turnover. Nice effort on senior night for her. 62-50, LSU down by a dozen. We approach the seven and a half minute mark. Stady pops out. Somebody's got to be open underneath. It is Afua. She uses her elbow to knock down a defender. No whistle on Afua. Scores. Maya Caldwell thought she drew the charge and was slow to get back up. LSU down by 10. 7.20 to go. Kayla Pointers checked into the game for LSU. One of six shooting. Maybe she can be some fourth quarter offense. This is a held ball, and it's going to stay with Georgia. LSU, over the last couple of minutes, has been more efficient offensively than at any time in the game. Six of the last eight shots have gone down for the Tigers. That's Trozzi who leaned in and poked that pass away. 7.09 to play. The Tigers are down by 10, and they're defending now with just over seven to go. He cannot shoot Pua right there. Great Stady from 15 feet, that's what she can do. Georgia makes the extra pass and makes LSU pay. Great finish by the Bulldogs. 14 and a half for Stady, 24 on the game. That ties a career high for Jenna Stady, the 6'4 junior from Cumming, Georgia, who started her career at Maryland. Georgia by 12. Afua from short range, too strong from seven. Connolly in no hurry. Connolly with six to shoot, three to shoot, one to shoot. Offensive foul. Offensive foul. Looked like Jalen Richard Harris was holding her ground. Nice shot making her miss. Drive to the lane though, and Richard Harris is set up there to draw the charge. Georgia leads by 12 with just under six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Pointer fakes right, dribbles left, but cannot shake the defender, Chapman. Pointer taking it low and draws the foul. A blocking foul will put stripe. Kayla is a leading scorer for LSU with 15 games. And is a 69% free throw shooter. Look for LSU to continue to attack the paint. High percentage shots. Not quite time to start shooting three pointers, but it's close. Pointer hits one of two. LSU is down by 11. Gabby Connolly, the junior out of San Antonio, works it up in Georgia. He'll get it to stay inside. All 
on the receiving. Puts it up. Can't come away with anything. And here comes LSU. Pointer with a slick move. Can't finish. Afua too strong after the offensive rebound. Two point blank range looks by LSU. Nothing went down. Jump ball and possession will stay with the Lady Tigers. Trying desperately to finish here, trailing late in the fourth. Goes up strong. Can't draw iron, though. And Paul's going to have to put her mitts on it. Tigers have to hurry if they want to beat the five-second violation. And they don't. So LSU misses a couple of layups or opportunities right at the rim and then fails to throw the ball in in time. 15th turnover of the ball game for the Lady Tigers. Georgia can be more deliberate now. Air out the clock. LSU has played hard. But there have been too many mistakes and too many dry periods offensively. Give and go to Paul. She mishandles it and it goes out of bounds. Five seconds to shoot. Let's take a timeout, 4.52 to play here in the fourth quarter in the Maravich Center on the LSU campus, Georgia 64, LSU 53. Were you planning on mowing the lawn today? No. Seen it? Covered it. At Farmers Insurance, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. So get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. With moderate to severe Crohn's disease, I was there. Just not always where I needed to be. Is she all right? I hope so. So I talked to my doctor about Humira. I learned Humira is for people who still have symptoms of Crohn's disease after trying other medications. And the majority of people on Humira saw significant symptom relief, and many achieved remission in as little as four weeks. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas Areas where certain fungal infections are common and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections or have flu-like symptoms or sores, don't start Humira if you have an infection. For you and them, ask about Humira. With Humira, remission is possible. 64 LSU 53, 24 points for the junior center. She's had a big second half. She's had a big month. Stadia is 10 of 15 shooting in this game for 20 points. She's also getting it done on boards with eight. She's looking down the barrel of a double-double. She's going to have another great game. This is five in a row where she's been scoring in double figures. LSU hasn't had much of an answer for her in the post. She's gotten what she's wanted here at the PMAC. 10 in the first half, 24 points altogether on 10 of 15 shooting. This ties her career best offensive output. And for Georgia... Wins in Baton Rouge have been very rare. This would be only the second victory for Georgia in Baton Rouge since 2002. The other came in uh, Joni Taylor's first season. That was back in 2015-16. So Georgia is trying to do something here that they haven't done very often in recent years. An opportunity to accomplishment will come if they can hold on to the ball, hit some free throws, and close out LSU. Caldwell throws it away. Let's see if the Tigers can string some profitable possessions together. Richard Harris waiting for the retinue to catch up. 4.42 to go. LSU cannot turn the ball over. A foul is called as Carly C goes with determination down that baseline and will step to the free throw line. Closer look with C driving the baseline, draws contact, and goes up. She'll head to the line. Three players in double-figure scoring for LSU tonight, including the senior, Jalen Richard Harris, who has 10 on a fool with 12, and Awa Trossi leading all Tigers with 13. Carly C. Before that free throw was 11 for 22. I can do that math. Improving on her numbers here. Paul comes away with the board. Yeah. 
LSU, for the most part, has shot free throws pretty well. Nine for 13. Georgia, though, is 13. And also has an advantage from out court with three more three-pointers than LSU. Smart play by Connolly there to draw the foul against Richard Harris. They'll get the ball back. She was a leading shooting guard last year because of the need for it. She's become the point guard this year. Still gets plenty of shots and, and distributes bump, as well. A bump by C as Connolly was doing her best globetrotter imitation. <laughs> Shot clock set at 20. Paul is looking inside. Trazi kicks away that entry pass. C is replaced by Jalen Cherry for LSU. Cherry, a quiet night on offense. Just two of four shooting off the bench for four points. That's off the window, and it's good. Caldwell has nine. That's her second bucket in this half. 66-54, LSU down by a dozen. And a violent collision, an offensive foul by Trozzi. Great quick step there by Caldwell to get her feet set and draw the foul in the post. She earned that one, Lynn. That was hard. Trozzi trying to make it happen. Trying to take it to the rim with authority. But there was a bull-like collision. And LSU will take a timeout here. There's a lot of work to do for the Tigers, trailing 66-54. 3.44 to play. We are back in a moment. At Farm Insurance, we almost every your home or car. Yeah! And we covered it all. Bundle home and auto with farmers, and you could save an average of 20%. So get a quote today. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. The odd-numbered quarters have been the most effective ones for Georgia, outscoring LSU 20 to 10 and 22 to 16 in quarters one and hence the 66-54 lead for Georgia. Let's get you caught up with some other SEC scores. Vanderbilt was defeated by Tennessee, a close game. Tennessee wins by four. South Carolina over Kentucky, 67-58. Alabama slips by Mississippi State. That's an upset. And then Texas A&M by a dozen over Auburn at the half. And nearing halftime, Florida 45, Arkansas 37. South Carolina like a boulder rolling downhill towards another SEC championship. They're now 14-0 in the league. LSU is trying to apply defensive pressure in backcourt. Georgia gets it into front court. Chapman will dribble away. The freshman from Mitchellville, Maryland. Chapman still dribbling, gets it over to Stady. She's had a big game, 24 points, matching a career high. Stady holding it, and Georgia calls a timeout with six on the shot clock. That's going to be a short timeout. We will keep it right here as Georgia is trying to play keep away and maybe get a point somehow at the end of the possession, but right now with a 12-point lead. LSU's got to be thinking about getting some balls to fall from distance. They've got three threes made in the game. Two of them belong to Jalen Richard Harris, the senior, but they're going to have to work some open shots, maybe set somebody up off the screen and get a clear look at the track into this. Let's go back and watch Jalen Richard Harris pull up jump shot twice. This one off the window. This one from distance. She's four of six shooting tonight. Couple of triples, an assist, couple of rebounds. Good all around night for the LSU senior.
Nice inbounds play from the sideline, unguarded by LSU. Somebody got picked off up top, and a three-point play coming for Georgia. Jordan Isaacs goes up well with it. How nice of the timeout by Joni Taylor. Looks so smart coming out of that little break. The go play from the far sideline. Isaacs with a couple of buckets off the bench. The freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia. And she gets a kind bounce on the free throw. Five for her. All in the second half. It worked out well for LSU as Apua was able to find her teammate, Kayla Pointer, for the bucket. Georgia breaks the backcourt pressure by LSU. Tigers will double team the ball. They are selling out now, and a foul is called. There will be free throws coming, and that's the fifth foul on Apua, I believe. Or I beg your pardon, the fifth foul on Trozzi. So Awa Trazi is disqualified on fouls with 2.52 to go. And the Tigers replace her with Mercedes Brooks. Trazi heads to the bench, five of eight shooting for the night, 13 points and a pair of rebounds. Tierra Young comes into the game and Jalen Richard Harris goes to the LSU bench. Maya Caldwell is good on the first one. 80% on the year. 10 points for Caldwell, five in each half. Georgia has shot free throws very well. It's missed only one, 15 out of 16. That and the shot difference has certainly played a part in this Georgia. 71-56. Trazi leaves that one just a little bit short, but it will stay with LSU. 2.37 remaining in the game. LSU down to their final two timeouts, trailing by 14. They're going to have to put back-to-back -back possessions together. Get a stop. That's going to be steps called against... LSU, Kayla Pointer was trying to work it in there and there was some contact and she started sliding and stumbling and that back foot came up and the whistle occurred and it's going to go back to Georgia. Kind of an unforced turnover. That's 17 now for LSU in the game. And a timeout is called by Georgia right ahead of the inbounds pass. Well, LSU has played hard, but the offensive efficiency has not been there. The Tigers are shooting 44%, which is respectable. Georgia right at 50%. So the Bulldogs have done very well on the road. But LSU three or four times as it approached Georgia would go through one of those sloppy spells, get two or three turnovers in a row, and each time it seemed as if Georgia would respond to that. Georgia has fought off a couple of would-be rallies by LSU. And this has been a really nice performance on the road for the Lady Bulldogs. Oh, you've got to give them all the credit in the world. They've knocked down the open shots. They've done the hard thing. They've gotten the extra rebounds, made the extra pass. You hate to say what if. What if Ayanna Mitchell's in this game? That one-two punch for LSU down low. Score might look a little different. Georgia tries just a heave, hoping that uh, one of its players will catch up with it. And that one did not go well for Georgia. It's going to be LSU's. Basketball with 2.29 to play. That post pattern went a little long for the Bulldogs. It Their did. 14th turnover. Spencer checks out of Pua with four fouls, returns to the lineup. 2.29 to go. There is no time for LSU to waste here. Young lopes into front court. Terry gets in trouble and loses it. She was trying to sling it around the defender. It was taken away by Caldwell. The only players who have hit a three-pointer tonight for LSU are on the bench. Awatrasi fouled out. Richard Harris is taking his seat now. Two minutes to play. The lead is 15 for the Bulldogs. 
Smart play, they'll run another 15 seconds off the clock. Faustina Fua slapped that one away with a left hand. Five to shoot, 148 remaining in the game. Take a look at the block, just the fourth of the game for LSU. Pretty clean by Afua as it goes out of bounds. Gabby Connolly could not get it above the LSU post player. Here's Stady, shoots without coming down, and a flat-footed rebound is claimed by Afua. 100 seconds are right now. In trouble, finds an open Faustina Fua who shoots it strong from six feet. Good communication between the teammates there. You could hear Afua calling for Sadie's to throw her the ball, but not able to finish. Afua's got 12 points. Most of those came very early. <laughs> 70 seconds to play, and Georgia is very close to coming away with a road victory. Opportunity for the Bulldogs with a win here and finish two more to be 500 in the league at the end of the regular season. Eight and eight. Stady comes off with the rebound less than a minute to go. And that'll be important for postseason aspirations if they can be 500 in the league, maybe 500 overall. They certainly played to their strengths tonight. This is an impressive showing by Georgia. Looks like they're going to get a little bit more. Some lanyap at LSU's expense. Connolly fills it up again. Connolly up to 23 points. And now Georgia can just essentially walk it out. seconds to go. Georgia comes away with a road victory and wins its sixth game against eight Southeastern Conference setbacks. Georgia now 15 and 12 on the season. LSU, which dropped two games on the road, loses this one at home. 73 points for Georgia is the most that LSU has given up in an SEC game this year. So a very nice offensive output by this Georgia basketball team. Tough to slow down a squad that comes in and shoots 50% on your home floor. They were able to answer all four quarters tonight. There were no scoring gaps for Georgia. An impressive victory from wire to wire. Stady had 24. Connolly had 23. Those two were big in the win by Georgia. So, LSU now has some regrouping to do with a couple of games left. The Tigers lose for only the second time at home. And the first time in conference. LSU 18 and eight now, eight and six in the SEC. That's the story for Garrett Walford. I'm Lynn Rollins saying so long from Baton Rouge, Louisiana where the final score is Georgia 73, LSU 56. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on the SEC Network, download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.